unfortunately, well, we, we can't go cycling this weekend if it's going to rain like this. No, it's uh, it's starting to take a turn for the worse, my friend. I think, think it is. I think it is. Yeah, which is uh, it's a shame because it's been so nice, you know. And yes. um, we were actually up late by the minute last week, but I think I think you were otherwise engaged last Sunday when Stan and I went out. Oh yeah, I was. Uh, where was I? Oh, well, I had a training you, session. Was, yeah, you had a training session, so you couldn't come up. But we we just cycled. I think, I think you know pretty much the same as you guys did the day before. But we went into Fort Langley, yeah. and then rode around there a little bit, and then waited for the coffee stop to open, and then we went for a couple of cups of coffee and a bit of a chat. You know, so it was quite nice. Yeah, it's uh, it was beautiful. I went. Uh, was it last Saturday? I forget what day it was. It was either last Saturday or whatever day, but. Uh, I, I was bugging Stan to come with me because I was like, hey, man, like the weather is going to be nice. So let's go. And um, I was already halfway through. So I was up like, you know how we go up in behind Rollis and Crescent there? Yes. So I was already up and behind there. And I literally pulled over to take a picture because uh, the, the golden ears is behind me. So it was beautiful. And then uh, literally my phone rang and Stan was like, where are you? <laughs> I said, oh, oh. well, you, you got some catch up to do, bud, because I'm, uh, I'm already halfway through. So he's like, all right, I'll meet you at the coffee shop. I'm like, yeah, I oh. knew you'd say that. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah but he, he, was in, he was in good form. You know, I, I think he's, um, he's obviously working very hard at the moment. You know, he said he's just oh. in out there. He's away from the place, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, any time away from the lab for him is uh, is probably much appreciated. It's been, it's has it been crazy for you guys too? It has. It's yeah. been. It has been absolutely nuts, especially surprisingly on the denture front. Is that, that right? That has really, really increased a lot. And you know what? I think a lot of it's to do with the fact that a lot of the really good, great denture technicians. Mm -hmm of the past are starting to retire yeah i see that i think i think with uh, with covid they've just said hey I, i've just had enough i'm 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 you know 60 plus mm -hmm. but they're the all the skills you know yeah. i mean the the digital dentures they're coming along yeah. but i think you still need a little bit of the old-fashioned skill you know you can't do without that and i think that's probably one of the reasons why we picked up a few extra clients it's been yeah. good uh, and that's interesting. I, uh, I mean, we're, we're <laughs> of course, we're already diving into shop talk, which is what we do. Um, so like, and like in terms of like, and I, I've, I've run into this for the last like seven or eight years where, you know, I go into a denture clinic or I go into a lab and they'd say, you know, Hey, like, keep your eye out for us. Let us know if you come across a good denture technician. And it's just, it's, it seems very difficult to find anyone who's competent. Well, I shouldn't say competent, but like some good skilled technicians who know how to make a proper denture, like the traditional way. Yeah. 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 I, th I think so. Because, you know, I think when you, um, when you're in the college now, you know, the, the, the fact of sitting there with some old wax and a few teeth sticking them in position isn't, isn't as sexy as, you know, building up a crown or, or milling a, a, a denture or whatever, you know, so yeah. the, I, th I think that I think the people come out that just don't want to do it anymore. Right. And yeah. Out who are, who, are, who want to do it, you know, probably want to work for themselves as a denturist rather yeah. than in a lab, you know, and and like you know throwing teeth onto wax all the time. Yeah. So definitely ch changing, you know, really is, and it's 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 exciting to look at the digital side of it, though, Tyler, as well. I mean, the digital side. I mean, you obviously see a hell of a lot of that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's interesting to see how those um, those um, those digital dentures are coming along. You know, mm -hmm. it really is fantastic stuff. And once they, get, once they get the aesthetics a little bit better of those things, wow, my goodness, I think we're gonna be in for a, something pretty good. Yeah, and it like, um, like with, with digital dentures, like I've seen the sort of like from the genesis to, to where we are today. And I'd say like, you know, when, you know, when the trios became big and, you know, I was selling the trios and I, you know, then we, it was exciting because we started selling the Serac and, um, and they broke the system apart. So it really, it was, it, I really liked that they, the Serac was a little bit more sort of broken apart and you could now the labs, they were really trying to work with labs on that front too. Um, but like going back a few years when I was selling scanners back in the day, I just want to make sure we're not missing any guests. It was just you and I here so far. Oh, no, yes. Mark might join us a little bit late today. But um, like the debate for me, like I would go to some of my dentures who were doing a lot, a lot of dentures and I'd say, you know, 
what's your take on this? What do you think about scanning for edentulous? Um, and five or six years ago, it was always like, man, like scanning edentulous, I, I don't know how you're going to do that. Like, how are you going to account for the movement of the tissue? Have you, have you seen like with, with the intraoral scanners nowadays, like scanning edentulously, like, is that, is that a thing now? Or is it still kind of an, like, is there kind of an evolution there? Well, when you when you do talk to the like you know, to the people who are who are having the, the most the most critical um, you know chats about about digital dentures, is exactly what you just mentioned the soft tissue, yeah. because you know the old sort of fashioned way of uh, you know sort of taking an impression, you know taking a border molding, yeah. was really really important for the retention of the denture. You know you didn't you didn't encroach on anything that you're not supposed to encroach on. So a lot of people are saying that because you can't do that. You know, digital dentures aren't going to be yet, you know, as sort of uh, as good as they should be. So that that's a huge debate right at the moment about about the pressure on the tissue. Right. So uh, border so border molding. So can you just walk me through that process? Like, what is what is border molding, and why is that different than than denture scanning and dentulously? Well, well, um, a border molding is um, you would normally take a um, um, a special tray and um, or a sort of custom made tray of the upper denture. Yeah. You would you would you would put around the edge of that, um, maybe like, like a, an old green stick or um, you know soft and Bunsen, put it around, or you can probably use an impression material, yeah. and then you would you would you would push that home around the around the um, um, the sort of um, um, you know edge of the tissue around yeah. where all the muscles are, and uh, that would that would pick up exactly where the denture sh should finish. Into the sulcus. Okay, that makes sense because there's kind of a bit of a gray area there, right? Yeah, it 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 puts it puts a little bit of pressure on there, just just to give it that little bit of that suction that you need at the very end of it. Right, and it's hard, you know, if you're going directly from a scan into actually milling or printing a denture, it's probably hard to figure that part out, right? Like, is it going too high up into the sulcus? Like, is it is that the issue that people are running into when they're going strictly into dental or digital? I believe so. I believe that is that is an issue. How much how much pressure can you put on there? You know, mm -hmm. do you have you putting enough? Are you putting too much? And I think this is where you know the skilled, old, denture guys you know right. knew exactly what to do. You know, and I think this is where. But I, I'm sure that I'm sure the companies must be working on it, because yeah. it is it is a point it is a point of issue. So yeah. you know, they're, they're definitely must be working on it. The but tissue it, is the issue. The tissue, <laughs> but it, it's it's quite a thing because it was um, it it's very very well taught in right. in, in the dental schools still border molding, and especially with the prosthodontists, and um, it, it's it's still something which is still done, and uh, you know when you're a technician you have to pour the model in a correct way to be able to get that border molding in the right place and right. finish it into in the right place as well. Absolutely, if I it's see grass is fully uh, successful. I believe. To be successful, yeah. Sorry, sometimes I'm a little bit delayed, David. I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, I see Graz has joined us. How are you, Graz? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. Am I saying your name right? Is it Graz? Yes, this is Graz, yep. Awesome. Welcome to, uh, to the Dance on the Man podcast. Um, yeah, as you see, David and I get, we, we usually jump right into our denture lab talk pretty quickly. So uh, excuse us if we go off on tangents. That's okay. Don't believe anything he says. <laughs> I never it, did, it, so it's okay. That's all we talk about, Tyler and I. We don't talk about <laughs> anything else. We're really boring. <laughs> We're dental geeks, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a dental geek. Uh, so, guys, um, just to just to kick things off, uh, welcome to the Dance on a Man podcast. As everyone, I'm hoping knows by now, I'm Tyler. Uh, Mark might join us a little bit later, and uh, I'm super pumped to have you guys on. So, we've got Graz and David Bird from Frontier Dental Lab. So, Graz, you're the general manager, I believe. Yes, I'm. Um, I'm a general manager at Frontier Dental um, at the moment. So, fantastic. Yeah, gonna... And David, what what's your role at Frontier these days? My role is uh, is uh, my title is director of business development. Okay. So, so, really, you know, trying to sort of get out there, um, you know, build some relationships. Um, of course, you know, build up the business. You know, for Graz and a team over there. Mm -hmm. um you know sort of um in, in meeting with uh with uh, strategic partners and um you know you know people who can help us develop our business absolutely that's really cool so um 
what I'd, I'd, I'd like to just jump in. So we'll probably keep uh, keep this to I don't know, like half an hour, 40 minutes today. I won't, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know how crazy busy you guys are. Um, I just sort of wanted to, because I never really got the chance in my distribution days to work closely with Frontier. So I just want to take a couple steps back and, and can you guys tell me, um, Graz or David, like what's the story of Frontier? Well, I think David would be better to talk about that because I've only joined the company in 2018. So I'm, I'm kind of afresh to the whole business sure. um, over here. So I think David would be better to just tell more about the Frontier story. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I can, because uh, I'm the old guy. Right? Yeah. So I'm, the one who's <laughs> I'm not right behind you, David. So uh, just uh, but, well, the reason the yeah. old guy jokes. <laughs> That's right. Well, <laughs> well, like, well, the history of Frontier is it's... It, um, it, uh, it began, it was born in, in the Sacramento, California, I believe back in 1982. And they followed um, at the particular time, a lot of the uh, American Academy for Cosmetic Dentistry, Pack Live, all the different sort of smile design um, courses, all the smile design gods who were around at that particular time got involved uh, very, very early on. And, and that's really where they built a lot of their business in the cosmetic world of, of you know the 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 actors the rock stars all that type of stuff and then slowly but surely that's they built a brand around that so they had the frontier brand um and then um i think it must be now about i would say about 10 maybe 10 plus years ago um frontier sold out and um it then took uh, another move when they opened a laboratory in Vancouver um, and that started from scratch and um, so they introduced through the um, through their the teaching academy mm -hmm. which at the time was called CCADS um, some teaching um, uh, sessions for dentists um, here in Vancouver from okay. from Canada and when did they start doing they that then taught a lot they started doing that I think that was probably about 12 to 15 years ago now and they started doing that and um that that opened things up here and here in canada and the lab in canada grew and grew and grew so so at the moment um we have two large labs with frontier we have the one in sacramento california and we have the one that Graz runs um in vancouver and they're still doing the same thing the brand is on those large smile design cases okay and so that's, so that's really, still their forte then so they're really about cosmetic uh, smile design yes that's their forte they're still they're still pushing the brand of that they're still well involved with acd not pack live anymore but still acd they won a lot of medals and that's where they that's where frontier have, have sort of really you know pitched the store right there yeah, and because I, I have a couple of clients in Vancouver, and I and they do like I see the Frontier bags in there, and I and I you know, of course because I because my connection with you, uh, and I, I I do see they're sending their their anterior uh, cosmetic cases to you guys. So the brand is alive and well in Vancouver, that's for sure. It is. Yeah. It is. That's fantastic. Thanks to Graz. <laughs> Thanks to Graz. She's killing it over there. So Graz, what's your story? Tell us about you. Oh dear, where do I start? Um... <laughs> Well, um, I'm originally from Poland. Um, I lived in England for 15 years and then I decided I wanted to change something in my life. So I came to Canada. I got a job at Frontier and um, I loved it ever since. Um, so I've been doing little things. I mean, I started, you know, uh, I trained classically, you know, with, I started even with dentures. Um, then I moved to Cranbridge. I was doing work, um, metal work. I was even ceramics for three years. And then I moved on to a CAD CAM. Um, so I wanted to know as much as possible about CAD CAM. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's why I got a job. Um, that's why I got a job in, um, in Frontier. They actually originally employed me as a CAD CAM technician in 2008. Um, and then um, I, thanks to David, actually, he found me in England. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. You so, met each other in England? Hold on a sec. Back the boat up here. No, no, no. We didn't meet in, in England. I applied for a job on Indeed. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, got it. Yeah. And then, but I actually worked with David's friend um, in Newcastle. <laughs> so the kind of, you know, connection was kind of there. And That's then crazy. obviously he called his friend for, uh, you know, um, to, to ask about me. And, and then, and, you know, his friend called Mick. Um, he said, oh, yeah, well, grass is fantastic, obviously. 
Right. So, you know, so David decided to just bring me here. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's why I, that's how I ended up in Canada. And so just to, just re, to, to um, go back so to yeah, and then after, Sorry, there's always a delay here, so my apologies. Um, so you were a tech in England and then, you know, you saw the opportunity to come to Vancouver and work. And now you said they brought you in as a CAD CAM tech initially? Yes, because the um, the um, the advert was, you know, looking for a CAD CAM technician. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I, I know CAD CAM, so I will apply. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I came as a CAD CAM technician and after three months, I got promoted to a technical manager. And then after another six months, I got promoted to general manager. So I think I'm doing well <laughs> if I got two promotions in six months, right? That's fantastic. Congratulations. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here's a question. So I was in Germany uh, in 20, either 2017 or 2018. And I got to hang out with some of the technicians from Henry Schein there and seeing what they were doing. And this was right sort of when printers started to really take off. Um, so when I was with these guys in, in Germany, they were installing all these printers called Rapid Shape, which we didn't have here in North America, at least not in Canada. Um, and Rapid Shape was all the buzz. And that was like a good three or four years ago. Um, would you say that on a CAD CAM level, like, is Europe or where you were before, whether it was England or Poland or wherever, like, are they just a little bit further ahead on digital? Like, what are your thoughts on that? I think they are much ahead. Okay. I, <laughs> I was trying to be kind of, I was trying to be polite there, but I thought when I was there in Germany, I was like, wow, these guys are like, they're talking about rapid shape and we're just trying to figure out forum labs back in Canada. I think then I don't think we even had forum labs yet, but um, at that point, like these technicians were going in and they were cross-trained in all these digital, like they could install dental chairs and lights, but then they were going in, they're installing printers along with all this other equipment. And I'm like, we don't do that in Canada. Yeah, when I first came, um, I felt like I actually went back five years with the technology from where I moved on from England, because right. I actually worked with Rapid Shape uh, D40 uh, before I came here. Okay. And, um, and, you know, and even the software, design software that I was working with was kind of a few steps ahead of the updates. Um, so when I first sat in front of that computer over here, I thought, well, I need to go back in time a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. A couple, a couple upgrades ago, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and do you see that as well, David? Like when you, cause I know that you, you, uh, pop back to the, uh, to the Island every once in a while, you, 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 you fly across the pond there every once in a while. So when you talk to your colleagues in England, do you notice that as well a little bit? You know, yes, I do. You know, gra I, you know, grass is, is absolutely spot on you know it, it, we are a little bit behind what they're doing in Europe and um, I think that's one of the huge things when Graz first arrived with us that we did notice how much she knew about stuff that wasn't even here yet right that we were, we were just starting to use over here and oh, I think yeah. that's a huge reason why she's done so well well, that must be a huge asset in the lab to say, you know, she she knows what's going to happen before before it comes to Canada. Well, she does. She does. And, and even before it sort of hits the dental office, you know, mm. Grass has had experience of it already back back in the UK. And, um, you know, and as you mentioned, you know, Germany and, and, and the whole of Europe, you know, Ivor Klar and Liechtenstein and all those places, I mean, they really are pushing, pushing, pushing pushing and that's that's where everything is is sort of released and used and sometimes we're a little bit slow here mm -hmm. in getting stuff you know uh, approved um yeah through the very through the various people who have to approve it um it seems to happen a little bit quicker in europe yeah and i think that um i mean obviously i think health canada is trying to do the best they can of course to get products approved yeah. in, in a timely manner but man oh man like it's the regulatory on these things it seems to me like europe europe adopts things first at least from from what i see in the western hemisphere is that europe adopts things first and then it, the us is not too far behind and then canada is kind of like well yeah everyone else is doing it so we're going to jump on board with this too yeah exactly yeah exactly cool uh so frontier so full service you guys do pretty much everything i mean cosmetic is is sort of where it's at for you guys but you guys do pretty much everything is that correct Gress? Um, yeah, I mean, we specialize obviously in smile designs um, because as David mentioned, we, we develop a, a Frontier Smile, which is our brand, uh, okay. but we do everything. We do implants, dentures, um, you know, night guards, you, you name it, we do it. Uh, we do lots of uh, combination cases, implant bars, any, anything, literally. 
you name it. You're getting yeah. a text there, just so you know. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're in demand. I hope this is not live. <laughs> just it. Yeah, that's that's Graz on demand. That's Graz on demand. <laughs> she's uh, <laughs> she's being pulled in many directions. Uh, so, is there something about the Frontier Smile? Like you, you guys, are, sorry, you guys have branded it the Frontier Smile. Is that correct? Yes, yes, we um, we have the our own brand, Frontier Smile. So. Um, well, technically, we specialize in smile design, so we work closely with, with our clients um, from the stage one. We, we do uh, we plan the treatment, we do diagnostic wax up, and we can even do digital diagnostic wax up so that they can show the patient. Um, we can import the picture of the patient in, on the screen and just show them how would that look like in your, in your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really fully yet perfected because the teeth that we have on the screen are bright white so the patients might get scared oh i don't want a white teeth like that of course yeah <laughs> but they don't understand that this is not about the shade it's about the the, the whole looks right but we, we we're working on it but it's not our fault per se it's it's the uh, software that we're working with so hopefully that will get somehow upgraded hopefully in the new future yeah i think there's um I think the trios might have shade detection now. Um, so I think that, like you say, everything's a little bit slow to come to Canada. So I think that it might be in the data capture component. Uh, when the dentist is doing the scan, it might detect shade uh, and maybe help um, populate that into the software. But I don't work for three shapes. So that would probably be a, a CAD CAM specialist question on the sales side of things. Well, when dentists uh, send into oral scan for trios, they can actually send us the shade. So the, the software detects the shade. Okay. So we can't input the shade into our lab design. Right. So it's kind of, a, they don't really, the two softwares don't communicate. Well, and wouldn't that be something that the dentist would say, hey, you know what, I'm in charge of the shade. You know what, like these, like we're, I have final say on the shade or, I mean, who knows, right? But yeah. I'm just spitballing at this stage in the game. But if you just say, hey, you know what, this is what the teeth are going to look like. Um, we're going to hand it back to your dentist and they're going to have final say on what the shade is going to be on this. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's just, you know, when you're a patient and you don't really know much about the digital designs, then right. you don't understand what you're looking at, right? Yeah. <laughs> All you can see is a bright white teeth. Do you, do you have uh, uh, patients coming into the lab to do custom shading or is it, is it all done digitally remotely? Um, no, yeah, we have uh, custom shading and, and custom staining. Sometimes when we're just doing one single front tooth, the patients want to come here to have a final staining before we actually send it to the dentist. Mm -hmm. So then they can decide, okay, well, I'm happy with the shape. That, that's fine. Well, let, let's, let's finalize it. So we still right. do yeah. Got you. Yeah, because I, I um, the reason I ask that is because I sometimes I'll have conversations with my friends who are not in dental and they, the, there's, there's the patients who have never had an intraoral scan before. And then there's patients that have had an intra, intraoral scan before, whether it's a trios, CEREC, um, any like plan mecca, any there's so many scanners now. Um, and I remember when a friend of mine saying this to me about three or four years ago, and he said, Tyler, you know, they have these things now, they're like wands and they go into your mouth and they scan and they, they create this digital copy of your teeth. He's like, do you know, they have these? And I'm like, yeah, I might sell them. And <laughs> so he, for him, it was such a paradigm shift in dental. He was like, why would anyone ever not have that scan done versus an impression? Because he hates impressions. He doesn't, you know, yeah, it's it was such a huge shift for him. So when you're having patients come into the lab for a, for a custom shade, for example, um, do you find that like when you explain the process to them that maybe the, the dentist has done a scan and they're like, man, like, are they, are they kind of blown away by the technology? Yes, they are actually, because they, they, they don't really know about the digital dentistry um, that much because it's not something that you would search on YouTube, right? Right. Because if you don't know about it, you don't search it. And then they go to the dentist, they, they take the scan and they, oh, wow, it was such a great experience. I didn't feel anything. And, and what's, I think, uh, the most difficult thing for the patients was the impression material was going down the throat. Yeah. With, with the scanner, you don't obviously have that, so they feel more comfortable. The only thing that I would um, say, because I had to have a scan done as well um, on myself, and just the, the, the head of the, the scanner, when, when they were trying to scan the back teeth, it was just stretching my mouth. Uh, but I think they, they bring in a smaller size head now, so you know, since I had it done, there's probably a, you know, upgraded as well. So. Right. Yeah. So when, so David, when you guys capture the scan and the, and the patient set or the dentist sends you over, sends you the, the file for the scan, 
you can pretty much do anything digitally with um, if they, I guess you guys can probably import uh, like a CBCT scan. You can import the, the, the scan of the teeth as well at the same time. Can you do pretty much anything with that digital uh, file? Yes, I, yes, 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 you can. And, um, you know, you know, certainly if, if, if things go to the lab, you know, for, you know, for surgical dents and stuff like that, you know, if, if there's a CBCT scan needed, then there is software available that we can, uh, we can sort of, you know, plan implants, make the surgical guides if needed mm -hmm. and all that, all that type of stuff. So yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff um, that, that we can do from those, from those scans, from those um, scans yeah. you know, and as Graz mentioned now, you know, night guards, um, coisty programmers, aligners, all sorts of different things. Although we don't do aligners in our lab, but we do night guards and, 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 you know, um, the coasty programmers and stuff and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But really, you know, um, when I'm when I'm out and about, it's very interesting how many dentists are still sitting on the fence when it comes to digital. Right. You know, if, and they just don't want to jump off that fence yet. Yeah. And and jump into it. And I think you know, if they don't jump off that fence and get into it and miss miss the bus, my goodness, it's going to be a, a long walk. To get back on that bus again, <laughs> the walk of you know, shame. Yeah, yeah, because you know it, it's 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 happening, and uh, we had a we had a um, you know really good um, show with the Prime Scan. Graz organized it in the lab the other week, and I went in to have a look, and what what a piece of kit that is! My goodness gracious, that is a great scanner. Oh, my goodness, if that's the way that things are going, oh, <laughs> the dentistry is going to be so different in the future. Yeah. I'm waiting. And when that scanner came out, that's why I was just sort of um, double clicking on the edentulous, uh, it, sorry, ed edentulous scanning, because um, I think that that is, um, and I try to be unbiased, obviously, I, I love the Prime Scan, I think it's great, we sell it, um, but I try to be open-minded and say, look, all the scanners have their attributes, but with the Prime Scan, it was one of the first ones that was really marketed as, an, as a scanner that could scan edentulously, yep. and it was fast. Yes, it's unbelievably fast yeah. and clear and everything. And, and just everything that they put in there is, is, it just makes common sense. They haven't tried to overcomplicate it. They've tried to make it pretty easy to use, right? Yeah. And I think, I think the complications of the whole thing do scare some of the dentists away from it. And, you know, what we've found is that it's been, it's been great because it's, you know, Frontier try we're sort of trying to build our business that we can communicate with the dentist. You know, a lot of dentist labs that can be quite antagonistic with each other. Right. But with Frontier, we've tried to make that communication between Graz and the clients just run so smoothly. And with the digital, we can do that. You know, it, it's, it really brings it on a lot more than what it, what it used to be with scanning, with all the images you can do now, all the things you can do. Yeah. And we talk about that. I, I, David, I, I think you hit the nail on the head when it comes to ease of use, because what are we all used to? We're all used to this, right? Yeah. So yeah. This, this device has changed things for us in dental because, uh, like you say, I think that the, the, the company that makes the scanner the easiest to use is going to win. Um, and, and we can see, right, like there's, there's 50 companies making scanners, for example. Well, there's really only five or six that are leading the charge because they're really focused on making the interface something that isn't intimidating. They're trying to make it really easy to use. And when I get into this technology with people, I just say, look, you're going to want something that's easy for not just you, but easy for your team to use. It should be intuitive. It should be, you should be able to pick it up, turn it on and scan or set, know how to send the file. It should really walk you through how to take a scan and get it over to Frontier um, and you know, you guys are there as, as great support to make sure that the dentist knows how to do that. But when it comes to technology, I think you're totally right. It needs to be something like an iPhone where you see the icons scan, mm -hmm. boom. Okay. So, scan oh, the bite. Okay. I can scan the bite yeah. next. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, because, you know, things can, you know, the communication, it, it can be so complicated and so difficult to use that, you know, things get lost in the communication. They're coming right. back and forth and, and all that type of stuff. And it's, it's you know, it's, um, but but to have something that's simple, bing, bang, straight in, that's really, that's really what we need to speed things up. And then, 
then people will be jumping off that fence and they won't yeah. be as scared of it as the, as the, as the worst here, right? The first person to come up with that is yeah. going to be, you know, <laughs> they're going to get a lot of it. They're, they're going to capture a lot of the market. So yeah. this question is for both of you. So if I'm a new dentist, I just moved to Vancouver. I just set up my practice. I'm like, okay, what lab do I work with? Uh, I, need, I need a lab. I need an implant company. I need a supplier. Who do I call? Like, do, do you get these calls from dentists quite often where they're like, hey, I don't know what scanner to use. I don't know what implant to go with. Like, how does that process work for you guys? That's, that's normally goes to Graz because she, she is such an expert in that, in that field. She knows about all that type of stuff. So that, that's a really good question thing for Graz. Um, yeah, I actually get quite a few calls um, with the dentist that just say, look, um, someone recommended you. Um, can you tell me I'm planning to buy a scanner? Uh, can you advise me on which one? So obviously I can't um, you know, say you have to get this one or you have to get that one. So I need to know about you know, different scanners, what the difference is, what would I recommend and how do they connect with us? And you know, I kind of guide them through the step from step one to the step five, right? You know, okay, well, you have to do this. When you get this kind of contact me, I'll tell you how to connect and all this. And with the implants, well, you know, um, if they don't really know much about scanning, then obviously we have to explain to them about the scan bodies, how do they work, um, how to take scans and just, just, just general information and, um, about all the, all the companies that, well, the main companies that are there. So I can actually say, okay, well, you have to use Strauman or you have to use Nobel or you have to use this. I, I have to tell them, okay, well, this company does this, but the other company does that. So it kind of keeps me on my toes to make sure that I know all the latest updates on, on different kind of things that, that come out right now on the market. So There's a lot you have to know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's one thing like on the distribution side for us, but like for you guys on the lab, like you're making the prosthetics, but you also have to know, okay, well, we've got like these 10 implant companies, like you say, right? Like, well, here's what these guys do, but these guys do a little bit differently and this might be a good fit for you, but I can't, I don't like, that's probably a fine line there who you recommend. You can say, here's what they all do. I'm not going to make the choice for you because mm -hmm. they don't want to come back on me. I guess, well, right? yeah, I mean, you know, I can give my recommendation on what would I choose for myself or what would I choose if that was like, let's say my mom, um, and then they can make a decision themselves. Okay, well, if she would choose this for her family member, then maybe I should go with them. But I don't like it. I prefer what the other company is doing. So I will go with the other company. So I can kind of force their decision, but I can't say, well, do what you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would give them my recommendation and I say, well, I would choose it for myself. Now, if you think this fits for you as well, then I would, I would go for that. Right. And it probably comes down to what they do, like the majority of the work they do. Right. Um, yeah. And I mean, let's face it, like there's so many great implant companies. They all make like all the products are great. Um, but like you say, right, like Nobel might do some do it. They, their workflow looks like this. Strama looks like this. BioHorizons looks like this. They all are great. But, you know, you seem to like this workflow that you here's the type of dentistry you do. So it seems like it might be a BioHorizons thing. That's at least my outsider take on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I think I think just just to go a little bit further from that, you know, with, with like what we found with our with our clients, and you know, what I found personally over the years with with you know owning my own lab, is that the clients grow to really trust what you say. Right. You know, if they're looking for some advice, they really trust Graz in the lab. There, they'll they'll, they'll call it. And they will really go with anything that she would probably be more hesitant to to say. Yeah, that's that's my that's my favorite because right. that's what they do. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with the new material, the new impression material they're going to use. They'll call the lab. What do you think of it? What do you think of this? Yeah, and, and, and that it's so critical for you guys because, like, not just like the the concept of if I'm a dentist and I want to jump into doing implants for me, like that's a that's a big jump, right? Like, I think that knowing that you have a partner that you're working with, like you guys, like Graz, that I can call up and say, hey, you know, I got this, I've, I'm, I've done 10 implants. You know, this one, I haven't quite seen a case like this yet. I'm a little nervous, you know, um, having someone in your corner that you trust is, is gotta be huge for them. The definitely, you know, definitely. And, and I, think, I think a lot of the time, you know, even, you know, Graz will even hold the hand to the procedure. You know, she'll, she'll even walk them through it. She'll even, you know, prep the study model if needed be. Anything, 
anything to be able to help them because you know it, it can be it can be difficult to do some of these big smile designs and you know people get nervous about it but you know grass can show them a step-by-step -step procedure to get through that and be predictable every single time yeah predictable that's the, that's the buzzword that's that's the key word we're looking for right here it is exactly right yeah. you know you know i think i think i think especially when you know people's time now you know the the the, the they don't want to be going back and forth all the time, back and forth to the doctors all the time. And, you know, they want to get things done. They want to know how long it's going to take and how many steps it's going to take to do it. And that's, yeah, that's what, that's what they're going to do. And, and you understand what they're getting done. And when they come to the lab for a shade, they go, wow, I can't believe this. This is what goes behind making that crown. It's not just something that just takes out of the drawer. Right. You know, <laughs> what we, this is, wow, this is what we do. Look at this. There's some big machines in here making a lot of teeth, right? Right, and this is this is why we're paying so much for it. Because look at the look what goes behind it. Well, and even just the, the the upgrades and the technology that you guys need to invest in. I mean, you guys need scanners, you need mills, you need you're constantly having to update your software. I mean, when does it end? Oh, it, Never it, it quite simply doesn't because it, it it's moving so so quickly. Yeah, especially at the moment. Yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on? Uh, Printer technology, and that question's for both of you. That's a that's a really well, open-ended question. Well, printing, three D printing is amazing. I love it. We actually just got a new three D printer um, last week, so we started full on models production from intraoral scans, uh, printed night guards. Um, so we're trying to get as digital as possible, and um, even with the model production, you can this. 29 models I have it printed within one and a half hour. And if you had a technician that has to cast in stone 29 models, he has to wait for them to set, he has to trim them. It's it's just so time consuming com comparing to the 3D printing. I just love it. So much more efficient, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and again, that's one of those things where you got the machine, how, how long until you can get all the materials you know, and the holdup is always with Health Canada, right? And and I, I certainly don't say anything about Health Canada. I know I know that they're doing what they can to get as many materials <laughs> approved as, as fast as humanly possible. But you know, it is frustrating sometimes when you're like, you know what, the denture resin. That's a good example, right? So people have been bugging me for denture resin for years, where they're like, when can I start printing dentures? And I'm like, I got the machine. I just don't have the material. I'm sorry. I it's not me. It's Health Canada. I don't talk to them. And that's um. You know, just in that specific case, I think the denture material is ready now. I think it's, I think people are starting to use it. Um, but yeah, like just the, you got to have the machine, but then you got to have the materials to put in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, for now we just have to work with what we've got. But I think our resin is available in, in Europe right now. It's approved in Europe. So yeah. just, you know, a few other materials that are available over there, but not here. Um, so I think that's another point of like, you know, Canada being a little bit behind. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like, is that my, I think there's somebody weed whacking outside my window here. Sorry about that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> my mic is very, <laughs> is very sensitive. I, I can't hear it outside my mic. I could just hear it. I'm like, is there somebody weed whacking in your lab? What's going on there? It's actually <laughs> my window. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, to, just, just to, just to Grass's point there as well about, and, and you know, you're mentioning a printers. You know, we were just talking before before Grass came on, on online about about the shortage of denture technicians. Right. The beautiful thing about the printer now is that you can print night guards, can print all the stuff that those denture technicians who we can't get anymore used to do. So it's 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 huge. I, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, it really is great for the for the future, for the ease for the dentist. You know, especially with the materials and especially when you're in the lab and you're, and you're having to, you know, sometimes make the old-fashioned, my God, the old-fashioned way with a metal flask, plaster of Paris, you know, right. boil it out, mix this horrible methyl methacrylate, smelling... Breathe in the bad breathe air. Breathe in the, the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's the future. It's, it's changing so fast. And so, like, what, like, what are denture technicians and or even technicians in general, like, are they... Like they must, what they're getting trained on must must be changing dramatically. Well, I, I believe it is. Um, when you when you talk to the people in the colleges, then I bring the scanners, the printers, 
all that type of stuff. So, mm. so the people coming out aren't really qualified as much anymore in, in doing it with the hands rather than you know, doing it with the with the fingers and a and a mouse. It's all on the computer. Yeah. Changing a lot. Um and I believe now for the first time there is a module coming in for the RDT exam, which will involve some digital stuff as well. Oh that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Things are changing. Um Things before I've I've taken up so much of your time, I, I really thank you so much for being on this with uh, with me both of you. It's been uh, very enlightening to hear what uh, just to hear what's happening in the lab world for you guys is is always really interesting for me. Um, before I before we start to wrap things up here, what do you think? And this is again, I'm throwing this out to either one of you. What do you what does the future look like? What do you think the the next big like? We're kind of in the middle of a huge transition that's been going on for the last few years. Now that we're having all the materials and machines to do everything. What do you think is going to be the next biggest shift in dentistry? Um, well, obviously, I think we're getting into more digital world, and we are at the beginning of Industry 4.0, which is another industrial revolution, which right. will obviously hit the dentistry as well. And I've noticed the old-fashioned dentists who don't really like digital technology, they're kind of close to retiring, and the new dentists, they, they're all about digital. Um, so I think the next stage is, is like David said, like, you know, reduce the staff and increase the machines, right? That's what I think. <laughs> right. And it's not, yeah. and it's not that they don't want the people. I think a lot of people can't find the people. Yeah, exactly. There's no technicians. I mean, you know, we've been trying to uh, find more staff, like, you know, while we're growing and, and it's really, really difficult to find like people qualified and, you know, experienced technicians who know what they're doing. Yeah. David? I think um, I think digital dentures. I think that's the next huge thing that's gonna that's gonna hit. It's gonna blow I mean, up. It's the buzz. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. So I, I think that's gonna be something that's gonna be upon us. Yeah, I think it's like you said before. I think it's it's it, it's it still needs a little refinement, but I don't think it's far away from being kind of a mainstream thing, right? No, no, no. And um, you know, and again, I think I think. I think the communication tools between the lab and um, and the dentist are going to get better and better and better digitally too. Yeah. You know, when when because now you know they can even they can even send a scan to Graz directly when the patient's there. Is that right? Say, so, hey, you need to take a bit out the back of that. That's not quite right. You need to round this off a little bit before um, you go ahead and you take that scan. Because once you take the scan, if that's wrong then so there's going to be a lot of that you gotta get the patient back in yeah that's really cool that you can do that in real time yeah we yeah. actually do have one um, client who's doing that already um she sends a scan and give me a call and say grass can you have a look can you see the margins do you want me to redo it or to just have a look so i can quickly just log in and, and have a look at the, the scan and say okay well we're good to go or no actually the margin on there and there is not not clear can you just rescan that area so we kind of communicate in a, in a real real time that is really smart when the patient is still in the chair yeah, yeah it's really cool yeah just to say and and i would do that like if i was uh if i were if i were number one if i were new to scanning um or if i was like you know if i was in any way unsure i'd be if i could call you and say hey i can't see the margin 100 percent on this like have i given you enough to work with there and for you to look at something in real time and go, yeah, you know what, we're good here. I think I think we're going to be able to make this. Um, I think that gives the dentist a huge, like a, a lot of peace of mind, right? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, and and us as well because then we don't have to call them and say, look, we can't see the margins. Can we take it? Because you know that 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 would just delay the case. Yeah, exactly. Wow, it's uh, it's amazing how uh, digital is uh, just taking efficiency to a whole new level in, in this industry. So very cool. I love what you guys are doing. Um, is there anything I haven't covered today that you guys want to tell me about with Frontier? Um, well, you know, I, 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 you know, I think for me, you know, we've gone through it, it's it's the communication. It's there's no misunderstanding, and I and I have a I have a little story I'd like to share with you. Absolutely, I love I, stories. And it's it, you know, I mean, we're, it, I wish we had a pint that we were that we were having while you could be telling me this story, though, David. I know, I, me too. As well. <laughs> I have a mug of tea, but that's I know. Not what it is this, this is my morning. pint right here. You know, like my dad, um, he was a dentist and, um, you know, I, I, I was born really into dentistry. My dad was a dentist, my granddad was a dentist and um, they had a practice in a very small 
mining village called Ashington. And it had a population then of probably about maybe 30, no, I would say 13 to 15,000 people. And most of them were coal miners, right? And this is a true story, by the way, because we used to we used to live in a in a small house next to my dad's practice. And there was one day my dad told me that he had this this patient come in, this uh, coal miner. And um, and in those days there was no there was nothing digital; everything was written down. So he's um, he's going through um, the inspection of the patient, you know, the, the sort of checking of. of his mouth and he's he's uh, talking to his nurse and he says um number 26 mo number 25 do 26 mo 36 mo to do and he gets through it and, and his nurse is charting it all and he stops and the patient says to him mr board what's all that uh, mo and do stuff that you're doing but that's as well it's just a way i communicate with the nurse just to tell her what what your teeth are looking like and all that type of stuff. And now you have a, a distal occlusal in that tooth, a, a mesial occlusal in that tooth. The patient goes, thank goodness for that, Mr. Bird. I thought it meant definitely out and maybe he's out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a true story. That one can stay. That one's got to go. That one's definitely got to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a brilliant uh, story. Brilliant I have story. some fun. And I, I and I tell you what, there must be, there must be some funny stories out there in dentistry. You know, like why don't we spread them around a bit more and, and you know, get especially the times at the moment, right? Yeah, there we we could definitely use a little more levity in this uh, during these times, man. It's uh, even like we talk about the change in digital. I mean, look at this, the COVID change now, right? I mean, I have this amazing studio that I get to shoot my podcasts in with Mark, but you know, here I am in this echoey office, which is not ideal, but you know, it's, uh, it's COVID times and we've all had to adapt and change. So it's, uh, what are you got? What, like in terms of COVID and, and, and the practice, have you guys seen a lot of change there? And I mean, obviously we're seeing the protocol stuff, but is it, does it Im impacted the workflow for you guys at all? Well, I believe dentists needs to have a limited um, patients per day because the, you can't have more than, let's say, two people in the waiting room at the same time. So they have to right. kind of do the appointments, yeah. um, which kind of can affect us as well because if they have more or less work and we have less work, right? Um, right. And we obviously have to uh, keep, keep up with all the restrictions as well when the patients come here uh, for shape taking. Uh, we need to make sure that, you know, in a shape taking room, there's only one person apart from the, from the patient. And, and it's kind of, you know, following all the, the rules and regulations. It's, it's, you know, we have to stay on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess like, and, and I've, I've heard the feedback is that they have to do more because they don't, they, they're limited on how many patients they can see. So they, they're almost doing more dentistry in that hour that they have with them. Yeah. So there's more coming through, but it's also like, well, it's tougher because you can't, you're not seeing the patient on as regular a basis. Right. So, and, and I think people, a lot of people are still pretty nervous to come back in to see the dentist and we're obviously everyone that's in dental is, is, you know, doing the best we can to educate and make sure everyone knows that dentistry is safe. It's one of the safest environments you can be in. Uh, go see your dentist, get a checkup done. Um, don't, don't put off seeing your dentist because it's important. Yeah, that's true. Um, I have one last question for you guys, and this is a serious one, okay? Mm -hmm. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. <laughs> <laughs> David, what's your take? Yes, it is. What? We've got a no and a yes. It's a elongated sandwich. It is a sandwich. Graz, you're like, definitely not. Definitely not a sandwich. <laughs> Do you know what definition of sandwich is? <laughs> No, what is it? It's two pieces of bread, not a bun. Oh, so, oh, right. <laughs> but you know, McDonald's, I think they do call some of their burgers sandwiches, don't they? That's why I don't know to eat at McDonald's. Okay, so because they're, <laughs> they're, they're confused with their vernacular. They don't know what they're <laughs> They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, we get that question a lot, and I, and I do say, sorry, we get that question just for fun in the end. And I, and I, I sorry, sorry, David, I'm with, I'm with Graz on this one. I just say that a hot dog is not a sandwich because it doesn't have a crust. Oh, right. That's why I say it. That's right. Now, my my mum used to cut all the crusts off my sandwiches. <laughs> well, that's your excuse. That's fine. Well, <laughs> well, you had a better upbringing than me then, didn't you? 
That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. My mom was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. well, if if here's another one. If there were no sea sponges, would the oceans be deeper? <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I, you know what? We can ask my twelve-year-old son that because he's a SpongeBob fan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, yeah. He might be the expert on this. He might be the expert, yeah. I'm going to write that question down. I'm going to ask him when he gets home from school. Yeah, ask him. He'll know that. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much for your time today, you guys. Uh, that's all I got for you. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for having us. And yeah. uh, it's been a real pleasure to... Uh, to do this thank you yeah absolutely we'll have you guys on again uh in the future and uh and david you and i will have to hop on the bike um it looks like like we said i think we're starting to see a few raindrops here but uh um i'm thinking in the next uh, week or two we'll get back on the bike and i'll i'll have to keep up with you i'll try to, hey you're looking great how much weight have you lost i've lost 30 pounds oh my goodness wow. you're awesome mate well thank you i um you know it was one of those things where i kind of I just kind of woke up one day and I said, you know, I, I've really let myself go. And that was it. I just said, you know, I'm not gonna let myself go anymore. And then I actually, you know what, you know what it was? <clears throat> I have a, a friend of mine who's a dentist, uh, Jordan Turton. He's in Cloverdale. Great guy. We've, we've become friends over the last few years. And, and I was kind of lamenting to him. And I said, you know, I'm like, oh, look at this. I'm like, I'm just a big butterball. And he said, you know, Ty, there's a, there's a gym in Cloverdale. And he says, I know you're in Walnut Grove. I know you're a little bit far from it, but he says, check them out. Come in, talk to the trainer. And the trainer's name is Ola and it's called Ola Fit for Life. And I believe it's a franchise type of operation, but Ola is the main guy there. And he said, no, come in. And I said, well, I'm like, I don't want the hard sell, man. Like I'm not a hard sell. Like I'm a sales guy. We can smell the hard sell coming a mile away. And Jordan says, no, no, just come in talk to him. And he says, if you want it, do it. If you don't, you don't. He's like, you're going to know whether one way or the other, whether you want to do this or not, because this guy is like, either you're doing it or you're not. So I went and I met with him and I immediately loved the guy. Like he's got this. He, and you know what was smart about what he did? He sat me down and he told me his story. He said, let me tell you about Olafit for life. And he said, I came from a small town in Nigeria. I didn't have a lot. I found my way to Canada. And I worked and worked and worked at a gym and I saved up enough money to finally open my own gym one day. And in telling me that story, I got a real sense of his passion for fitness. And, you know, he's a bodybuilder. This guy's like the real deal. Like he's a bodybuilder. Like he's just absolutely ripped. He's huge. If you want someone to train you, this would be the guy. Um, and, but it, it wasn't really the fact that he was this bodybuilder and he was like in immense shape. It was his story that got me. It was this uh, really inspiring story of a guy who really kind of had nothing and came to Canada and made something of himself. And I'm watching every day. He comes to the gym at like four in the morning and he's working out and he's always, he knows every single one of his clients on a first name basis. Obviously he's very strict about COVID protocol. Um, and, but he's also very strict about like, if you're going to do this, do it. Like, don't, don't half ass it, man. Like, let's get you in shape. If you want to do it, I'll get you there. But you got to follow the rules. You got to follow what I tell you. Otherwise, I'm not interested in training you. So he says, you go home, think about it, talk about it with your wife. It's going to be a commitment. And if you're committed, I'll get you there. So I went home and I thought about it. And I said, you know, geez, you know, he's 15 minutes down the road. It's a little bit far from me. I don't like that. But I said, I really like this guy's story. So I started training back in August. And he said, Tyler, the first thing we, he said, great. I'm excited you're going to join. He said, now the first thing I got to, I said, I got to get 30 pounds of fat off you. He's like, you're just you're, you're, you're 30 pounds overweight. I got to get it off you. So it was really hard at the beginning, but now from August to now, it's been this transition. It's been, I, I literally go to bed at night and I'm, I look forward to getting up at the ungodly hour of four 30 to go to the gym for five, because that's my hour. It's my alone time. It's my time to think about what I'm going to do that day. And I get like, I, I bust my ass at the gym and I go for it. And then he's there and he's like, Hey man, keep going. You're doing a great job. He's there every single day reminding me what a good job I'm doing. And the guy is absolutely lights out. So I, I owe it to Jordan for introducing me to the guy and, uh, and to, to Ola, if you really want to get in shape, this is, I know we're not talking about fitness, but Ola, he's, he's my guy. Like I want him to train me for the rest of my life. I'm going to be involved with him on some level at some point for the rest of my life. He's going to keep me in shape. That's why they call it Ola fit for life. I really feel like I'm going to be one of his clients for forever. Cause he's like, yeah. if you need to dial it back and take a break, fine. But he's like, I'm still going to be on you making sure that you're living a healthy lifestyle. 
which totally resonates for me. So <laughs> it's kind of a long story, but that's kind of my, nope. my, my health and fitness story. It's a, so has he given you, um, you know, diet sheets and all that type of stuff to, to watch your food, watch your diet, as well as the exercise? You know what? It's great because I, I sort of came into it and I said, look, I, I, I'm not one of those guys. I, I, I don't have a ton of money to spend on like a, a personal trainer every, every, every week or whatever. And I said, so like the first concern for me was the, the price tag, right? I was like, I don't like, I'm not a personal trainer kind of guy. Like I can't afford this, but he was like, okay, well, we'll build a plan for you. And then that, that you can't afford. And so we, we, we put a plan together, but yeah, like you say, David, in that plan, it was a dietary plan as well. So mm -hmm. I know what I'm eating every day and it's great because they have a little software app. So you, you know, what time you're working out, you know, what you're eating that day. It's a challenge. So when I was trying to get that initial weight off, it was really hard because I was like eating a lot of chicken, a lot of rice, a lot of salad. And it was like, ugh, it was, it wasn't great, but you know, Katrina and I both agreed. She's like, look, you're committed to this goal. She's like, I hate watching what you're reading. I, I don't like that, but she's like, I understand what you're doing. So um, again, it was a commitment to it. Now that I'm like six or eight months into it, I can kind of eat what I want as long as I'm kind of staying within that. Like, I don't really like to count calories. No one wants to do that. Um, but I kind of know after watching calories for a few months, I know that what I'm eating, I can, I can kind of guesstimate how many calories that thing that I'm eating is. And I know, right? Like once or twice a week, I'll get a pizza or I'll have, I don't even, I don't eat, eat McDonald's, but like I'll eat something that I know is not part of my diet and I'll go, okay, well, that's my one or two for the week, you know, chocolate cake or beer or whatever. Like beer is a different, beer is a different struggle for me because I love beer and I drink it often. Um, but you know, I know roughly in the back of my mind, what type of calorie intake I'm bringing in. Um, and knowing in the back of my head is a lot easier than me counting calories. I don't like, and he said that he's like, look, if you count calories, you're going to drive yourself nuts. Don't do that. Understand what each meal you're eating is eat often and know just have in the back of your mind. Okay. This is like 200 calories. Cool. I, I kind of know what that is. And then throughout the day, you know, if you're putting on weight, you'll know, okay, I'm taking too many calories. Let me just reset the dials at the start of the week and make sure I know what calories I'm bringing in. And as long as you're busting your butt at the gym, like minimum three times a week, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see you getting back in the movies again. The, the Bay Watch Four. <laughs> How did you know? I'm not sure it's when you get your all, all, all oiled up on the beach. That's right. I'll get uh, I'll get the big oil going, and uh, you know they'll they'll be like, "Wow, that." I'll go with no tan. You know, they'll be like, "That is that guy's like frog belly white. That is like, that is the whitest white man we've ever seen." <laughs> Cause when I don't tan, it is, or when I'm, when I don't, when I don't have sun on me, I go a different shade of pale. That's why I call it frog belly white. Cause like, I'm not, I'm beyond pale. I'm that Irish pale. And no one likes the Irish pale. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey Tyler, have you yeah. been down to Fort Langley recently? I have, I've, um, did I, did you, that, well, I rode with Michael and uh, yeah, there's a, I was there yesterday, actually, there's a, they had the two, the street blocked off and they had a, this big green screen. It must've been like, I don't know, probably about 30 yards long blocking off the whole street. So they got a green yeah, screen and they got army I tanks. It. Yeah. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I was down there yesterday morning as well. I, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's uh, it's really cool. They were doing, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, that. go ahead. I'm interrupting you. No, I was going to say that they've, they've built a coffee shop, a full on coffee shop with bricks and everything on the corner there. Yeah. And they, they, they're, they're something green, it's called or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were shooting there. And as you said, they had the tanks, they got a helicopter there. Yeah. Unbelievable budget. Well, and I, I, was... went, I went to get a cup of Yeah. And, and all the coffee shops, all, they're all in there. All the, all the people working in the movies, nobody's paying for anything. So obviously <laughs> they just get coffee and they put them on an on account and it gets settled afterwards. Right, you know? right. That's brilliant. So you can just say, you know, you should just do one of the walkie talkies and say, I'm with the show. Yes. Right. Order yourself a really expensive coffee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was driving through there yesterday and they had, um, I saw all this smoke coming out. And I was like, oh, is there something on fire? What's going on? So, and I was, uh, I was driving through, but you, they, were, they detoured me around because I was trying to get up to 96 uh, and get back up to my place. So I detoured around. And then, of course, I looked to the left and I saw this big green screen. 
And man, they were, they had the tank go on and they had like, I think they had like a machine gun fight or something. Like it was a full on action scene. It was a, yeah, full on. Yeah. And they had, they, they also had the road. It looked like it was all blown up. Yeah. Had big piles of, you know, road the other way and upside down. And it was amazing what That's they were doing. Cool. That. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see that movie when it comes out. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, you. You might see me on the screen uh, in the near future. Uh, you never know. Well, we'll, uh, I, I, we'll keep that under wraps for now. That would be awesome to see on the screen again. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. I come and watch all your movies. I'd be the number one in your fan club. <laughs> You'd be like, well, I can't act, but I know him. <laughs> Nobody's. He's, he's, you've, you've, you've done quite a few movies, though, haven't you? How many I movies? Did, uh, the grass, just to bring you up to speed. So I, I was an actor before I got into dental. Oh, okay. Well, I don't recognize you. Sorry. Yeah, well, that's okay. It's, uh, it was a long time ago. I was very, I was a very obscure, unknown actor. Um, but yeah, you know what? It was, it was a good, good thing going for, I did it until about 2012. And then I got into dental and I said, you know what? I don't need the acting thing anymore. Dental's really sort of stolen my heart. And then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hint to it. It's, um, you might, there might be some stuff happening in the background, but I have to do it on evenings and weekends. So what movies were you in? Keep that quiet. Oh man, uh, what movies? Were, yeah, um, movies I was in. Um, there's oh, if you read one called Love Happens, you'll see me in that one. Love Happens. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've heard about it. That uh, Jennifer Aniston and Aaron Eckhart were in that one, and then there's a lot of stuff that I was that I got cast in. Um, that like Watchmen is one, for example, where I had lines, but then you don't hear me say any of my lines because they all kind of cut the line parts out. So I just kind of show up and then I disappear. <laughs> um, that's one where that that one where um, well, I was in Watchmen. It was a Zack Snyder movie, which was exciting. And so you know, of course, myself and all my college uh, buddies, because I went to theater school. So a bunch of us went to the theater to watch Watchmen. You know, because oh, Tyler's in Watchmen, so we got to go watch it. And it was the first lesson I learned to not tell your friends you're in something, because we're all in the movie theater, you know, eating our popcorn, getting ready for my scene to come up. And literally, I came on screen for like one second, and then I disappeared. <laughs> so. It was disappointing to say the least, but um, that's happened on a few times. Like that happened, and then uh, I was in Underworld, and I made the mistake of telling friends and family, and then of course they cut my scene. I'm not even in the movie, <laughs> so that uh, that does happen more often than you think. But then a lot of a lot of commercial work you did. You did a lot of commercials, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Like um, I did an Amstel Light commercial. I did Honda commercials. I did uh, I did one Tim Hortons commercial, which aired coast to coast. So it was on every commercial break throughout the day, you just see, like it was literally my face plastered on the TV, drinking a cappuccino or whatever. And it was funny because we'd get calls from people all across the country. They'd be like, Tyler's on TV. Like all I see is his face right now. And it was, it was, uh, it was pretty fun because it was, it was just in Canada that people saw it. Um, but that lasted for about, uh, I'd say two or three months where people were like, I keep seeing you on TV. It's so cool. And then, uh, and then it went away. That was my claim to fame. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Oh, well, good luck with what you're thinking about. Good luck. Yes. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. Cool. So I'll let you back to your day. I know we've talked a little bit about my health and fitness and stuff, too. So thank you for humoring me on that. Well, no, hey, look great, though. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks, awesome. Dude. Good stuff. David Graz, it was great to talk to you. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. We will do, Tyler. Okay. Great. Talk to you soon. Great, Graz.